Infinifrag, the game that started the biggest game ever. Released on November 4th, 2006, Infinifrag was a multiplayer first-person shooter developed by Zach Barth, who founded Zaktronics. This game is less than great, with some aspects of building and shooting overall being very simple, made in Python. Back in the day, you could play Deathmatch, being able to shoot at people or build, which resembles a very early aspect of what Fortnite is now. This game was made from scratch in just one month and the community loved it, which sparked the creation of Infrafrag 2. The only real documented evidence of the game is from a guy named Dan Hathaway who was one of Zack's friends at the time. He showed him and his friend group Infrafrag 1, which they all believed was brilliant. Dan was asked to help work on a sequel of the game and he enthusiastically said yes. On this page, Dan goes into detail about the ideas and execution of the game being developed, which from the screenshots, massive improvements were made. This game was developed for about a year, but Zach pulled out of the project because the project was too large. Dan continued to work on it after Zach's departure, which later became Block Arena. Dan says he was bummed when Zach released Infiniminer shortly after because he would have loved to work on the project, but Dan definitely influenced this game and contributed a lot without directly being there. Infiniminer is an open source multiplayer block based sandbox where you play as a miner and search for minerals and tunnels. Unlike Infinifrag, this game doesn't have any shooting aspects in it. The game was intended to be a team based competitive game. The goal being to locate and excavate metals and bring them to the surface to earn points for a player's team. This game quickly grew a following on message boards of the internet, which for a game released in 2009, looks pretty good. Zack used everything he learned from Infinifrag and Infinifrag 2 to make a way better game and you can see the progression in his developing. People who actually played the game didn't really care about the intentions as most people just liked the fun aspects of the game like building. Zack stopped developing this game less than a month after because of a source code leak. He didn't secure his code so it was decompiled and extracted from the binaries. This was used to modify the code to make mods and a bunch of other things. As Zack was working on this for free, he lost interest and dropped the project as he said the game had become too difficult to develop. This would be a decision that Zack would think about for the rest of his life as if he would have continued on with it, who knows what could have happened. Although this game didn't last long, a young developer would discover this game and decided it was the game he wanted to do. But first, Ruby Dunge is a game you have probably never heard of because not much is known about it. It's an unreleased strategy sandbox created by Marcus Pearson, also known as Notch, which was developed from February 2009 to May 2009. The game was influenced by Dwarf Fortress, a construction and management simulation indie game, but was cancelled early in development, never to be released. Other than this, we have 5 screenshots of the game and that's it. But from these, we can see textures for the game that might seem very familiar. Notch wanted the game to have both isometric and first-person viewing modes, but thought the textures were too blurry when viewed close up. Shortly after working on this game, Notch came across the game Infiniminer and decided that the game's first-person voxel-based system would be a better choice for the gameplay that he aimed for in Ruby Dunge. He had a blast playing this game, but found it flawed. He states, Building was fun, but there wasn't enough variation, and the big red slash blue blocks were pretty horrible. So he repurposed Ruby Dunge into what's called the Cave Game Tech Test, even using the same code base, which later became Minecraft. Even in the first recording of the game, it's apparent that he just used Infiniminer as inspiration for the project and just expanded on what made sense to him. Nash described this whole venture on his blog titled The Origins of Minecraft, dated October 30th, 2009. As we know the history of what this super early prototype of the game would become, it's hard to wrap our heads around this simple little game. But an important part of a game is the character you play as, which was an issue for Notch. He wasn't too good of an artist, and realistic models would clash horribly with the game, so he used models he did in Zombie Town to get this. One of the most iconic Minecraft pictures ever. Notch continued to develop the game slowly releasing private single player alphas and got released to the public on May 17th, 2009. The game got a mention from IndieGames.com and it just continued to be developed and growing to what it is now, but this leaves a lot of questions. Obviously, sandbox games are among one of the most popular genres of games and block sandboxes are also pretty popular. So how does Zach Barth, the pioneer of the game type, feel about the whole thing? 
From what I've read, it seems like he feels conflicted, but overall positive. Obviously, Minecraft takes a lot of inspiration from his game, and as a game that's generated hundreds of millions of dollars, you can't help but kind of be mad at yourself. But he also says that he feels proud to inspire indie games like Minecraft, and without them, he may have never been where he is today. Games like Minecraft being bought for billions made all indie game devs realize that they too could sell their games for money. He also says that he would have never turned Infiniminer into anything like Minecraft, so he doesn't believe Notch just took his stuff and ran with it. He went on to make his own studio and develop a lot of games and seems to be living a happy life now. But again, if just a couple of things went differently, like securing his code, who knows where Infiniminer would be today? This happens more often than not in the world. One man's trash can be another man's treasure, and sometimes that treasure can lead you to becoming a billionaire. What do you think? If you were Zack, would you be upset at Notch, or would you be happy to see your idea turn into the number one game ever? I think this should just show you that if you like something, pursue it. Don't let others bring you down, and if you see it out, you never know what could happen. Maybe you make the next Minecraft.